What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we're going to show you three easy ways to do shrinking sheet metal by hand. We're going to use hammers, tucking forks and another tool that we're going to make in this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, we are gonna build the Mother Tucker Shrinking Stump Kit. These will be available soon. They might be available by the time that I post this video. Um, I'm having these manufactured. They're gonna look way cooler than this. I will clip in somewhere right here. Mother Tucker Hammer, new version. And what's gonna come in the kit is going to be these straps. These are flat bar straps, all the hardware necessary. And what these straps do is they hold the top of the stumps together, they hold the bottom of the stump together, and then we will have a nylon piece that screws on that you also get in the kit. So you get the hammer, you get all the straps for the stump to make it, you'll get a wooden domed grinding disc so that you can grind your bowl or your shape in the tucking stump, plus the nylon, like half inch thick, it's kind of hard to get nylon sometimes, so I buy it in bulk so that I can cut them into small pads so that you have nylon against nylon for grip strength as we are metal shaping. So I'm just gonna go to time lapse. I'm gonna quickly make this bowl, show you how easy it is, and, uh, and then we'll start tucking with the shrinking stump and then moving on to the other two kinds of hand metal shaping shrinking that we're gonna cover in this video. Let's go. So what we've done is we've put our straps on. These bolts are extra long because there are two different sizes of wood that you can buy. It's either dimensionalized lumber, like a raw cut lumber, or it's been through a planer. So this is the smaller of the two. That's why I've got a little bit of extra bolts there, but it doesn't matter because I give you enough nylons to, to use either one, either the six inch stuff or the five and a half inch stuff. So right now I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out. These were just cut on a, on just a uh, like a chop saw um, and the sizes 30 inches times four you need for the bowl area and then 29 and a half inches times two for the area that we're going to put our nylon pad on so i'm just going to try and make this a little bit flatter and then we'll go from there stick the nylon on personal protective equipment All right, so supplied in the kit, you've got this half inch thick chunk of nylon. It's already countersunk. You've got hardware so that we can basically stick it right on. You could trim it to size like this. This gives you enough for the larger wood, but you could trim it to size if you really wanted to. I kind of like that it overlaps the bars in case you want to use the edges. Simple as that. Now we've got a nice grippy, hard-ish surface for us to bang our sheet metal onto. Next is the bowl. Now when it comes to doing the bowl shape, you might want different shapes. Like you might wanna make more than one of these stumps so that you have a variety of different shapes um, or of different shaped voids in your wood. I mean, it doesn't have to stop here. Put this on here, I'm gonna trace it out. This one's just gonna have a basic circle in it. You can actually do quite a bit with a circle, with just a circle, so. I might, I might do a teardrop shape. 
this time. Just to give us a variety. Okay, so we've got a little bit sharper spot there. This is the material I'm going to remove. Now, what I'm using to remove the material, this is supplied in the kit too. You get the hammer, the hardware, the straps, everything but the actual lumber. This is just fence post lumber. You should be able to get it anywhere. So this is the disc. I've already made a bowl with it once so you can see it's already kind of dirty. But these are little teeth that are sticking on a rounded grinding disc. So this disc is perfect for making this bowl. If this is the only thing you use it for, like this disc will make you as many bowls as you need to make. So that is included in the kit as well. We're gonna just stick this on a grinder and go to town. The other beauty thing about nylon is that it bounces. So as long as you hold the hammer right, it really doesn't take much to, uh, to use it. That thing's still on, but I can't hear it. <laughs> Playing with your life, Elio. Okay, the heater shut off. Let's This is not easy work. You're gonna have to take off a layer of clothing. It's the rule of thumb as soon as you start hammering stuff. I usually like to use those like cotton gloves that are dipped in rubber, but I don't have any, so I'm using these. These are really nice. They're uh, from Butler's Customs and Cafe Racers. I think they're prototype welding gloves. I didn't see them on their website, but thank you. It's beautiful gloves. Okay. Beauty thing about a shrinking stump. Here. Is that gonna keep beeping? Done? Oh. The beauty thing about the shrinking stump is that you can get a lot of shape pretty quick. There's multiple ways to use the shrinking stump. I can't hear myself talk, so I'm gonna pop these out for the moment. You can just start going and beating the metal into that shape. If you cut the perfect shape that you want and you had enough time, you could just beat it into that shape and it would eventually kind of get there. But I like to be a little bit more purposeful with my shrinks. So what if I wanted to purposefully add shrinks in exact locations? Like if you were to, sh to shrink this into a bowl, you would want even shrinks all the way around it. You wouldn't want to just hammer it into this shape and have it pop organically wherever it's gonna go. Um, not if you were trying to be deliberate on it. So some thing that I like to do is I like to actually pinpoint the tucks and this is the secret like this is one of the things that you know really kind of changes the game as far as using a stump so if I wanted a shrink here I wanted one there I wanted one there and I wanted one there how are you gonna make sure that those go in exactly there how do you do that with a shrinking stump this is how so what I want to do is I want to use the edge of this nylon and I want to just give myself a starting point, right? Like, so what I'll do is I'll use the edge of this hammer and I'm going to hit right along the top of this line, just on a slight angle. Now I started making the top of a crease on the line. When I flip it around, I do the same thing. I'm essentially telling the metal 
that that's where I want the tuck to happen. And because we've weakened this area, when I hit it into this bowl, that's where it's gonna pop. I'll show you. So, just make sure that we've got the start of our tuck right there. See that little peak? And it goes along the line. If I want to pop that tuck, I've gotta hit the pointed part of my hammer directly in front of where I want the tuck to be. Does that make sense? So, if I'm holding it into the bowl like this, and I've got the edges supported by the edge of the bowl, and I go ahead and hit this right there, that is gonna pop this. There you go. There's the tuck deliberately put into the material exactly where I wanted it. Now, the next thing that you need to know about a shrinking stump is that it is facilitating the shrink by holding it in that shape. So because those shapes are like this, they are opposing that wrinkle. So if I hit that wrinkle down and these are opposing me hitting the wrinkle down, it's gonna naturally push the material together. And that is shrinking, that is tuck shrinking, that is thumbnail shrinking, that is tucking forks, that's everything, is the shape of it. So, because we've got this round curve that we're sitting in now, I can actually hit, starting here, working this way out, and it is going to push the material together. Watch. I'm using the fatter side of this hammer now. Now, you can already see that that's just one shrink. So I'm gonna use the nylon. I'm gonna allow the hammer to bounce off the nylon. And I'm gonna smooth this out. Now that, if you can tell, like that's it's quite a bit of shrink. So I'm gonna do the next three, and then we'll see how much shape we have just from three tucks in this tucking stump. So, I'm gonna pop. Try our smaller part of the bowl here. Let's give it a shot here. Also works awesome. Can you also hit this on the wood? You can also hit it on the wood, but the, uh, the wood is kind of soft. So I wouldn't smooth this out on the wood because it's a little bit too soft. That is exactly why this plate is here. Is so we can hit this as hard as you want. Like nothing is gonna happen to that plate and it will not stretch the material no matter how hard you hit it because the nylon and the nylon are sandwiching it and they're both softer.
Okay, there you have it. That is four tucks in this stump, four. Like, that's a lot of shape. It's a lot of shape in a small amount of time with a very simple tool. Hopefully that technique works for you guys. And I got two more to show you. Next up is the tucking fork. I did do a video on building one of these. They're very simple. All it is is a couple of tapered pieces of round bar made onto like a little handle. Basically what I'm doing is deliberately putting in tucks with the fork and then we're gonna hammer them out without a bowl. This is another technique that completely separated from a shrinking stump, another way you can shrink metal. So for me, I like to know as many possible ways of doing something in which case one way might be better suited than another. Um, if I'm making a bowl, the tucking stump is kind of awesome because it's already shaped like a bowl, but perhaps I had to put in a tuck in a spot where I couldn't get it in a bowl. I could use this by hand and I could actually take the piece of metal and, and put my wrinkles in it. That's what it's for, is for putting in wrinkles. That's just a little one, but what you can do is you can put them in a vise like that. And if I wanted to put a tuck in here, I just bend it one way and then I will bend it the other way. There we go. And make the wrinkle in the piece of metal. So once you have a wrinkle like this, how do you hammer it back out and keep that tuck in there? You know what, I'm gonna make another one as well, something straighter. <laughs> Let's make one a little straighter. Okay, so I've got this giant tuck in here. What do I do with it? I'm gonna put my gloves on. So what we need to do next is we need to capture the tuck, which means if I just started hammering this thing back out on flat, this wrinkle would come back out and it would just be flat again. So the difference is going to be capturing the tuck. How do we hold this information in here? How we've gathered this material, we want that to shrink into the rest of the piece. So what we do is we work on the end of the tuck. What I mean by that is we're gonna hammer this end together until it's flat and there'll still be a bit of a bubble in here and that is capturing the tuck. You'll see, it'll look like a flat lip with a bubble. And once that lip is flat, that is what's gonna hold our metal together while we push the rest of the metal flat. And it'll kind of go into itself. You'll see in a second. So you can use anything. You could use, you know, any handheld dolly welded onto a piece of steel. You could use a piece of scrap steel. It doesn't have to be special. I was lucky enough to get these steak dollies from a friend of mine, but um, this is what I'm gonna do. You start on a bit of an angle. and you start folding this material closer to itself. Just to flatten that out, um, I'm gonna use this other one that's a little flatter. See, now I've flattened this lip out and I have captured this much metal in there. So I am shrinking that whole bubble. It just looks like a bubble now. That bubble will get pushed into its surrounding material because it's locked in by this edge. That is capturing the tuck, okay? So now that that is, I can just hammer this down, but with a softer hammer, See how I'm just hitting that down? This edge is not changing. All this material is getting captured within the borders of our tuck. Now, that is captured within our sheet metal. So that tuck is in there. We could do the same to this one, even though it's kind of crooked. Let's do it again. Uh, my Give it a little bit of a tune up.
Okay. Now that whole bubble, once again, is captured within the sheet metal. I'll hammer it out with this thing just so that you see that as well. Okay, so two tucks put in by hand with a tucking fork. That's that. Now let's check out one more way of making a tuck by hand. You don't need to go to the gym to work out. You just make a metal shapings. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much pump right now. It's like, it's like I've done like six tucks. Come on guys. <laughs> we need machinery. Um, okay, so this is something I saw on the internet. I saw somebody uh, doing a copper bit of metal shaping this way and I thought, man, that's such a great idea as a super simple tool to make a tuck. So um, we're gonna build one right now. I've never made one before, but I saw it and it works and I think that it, it just works. So I've got this chunk of scrap. This chunk of scrap has been floating around. I swear it's been in like eight videos. Like, Probably, yeah. Because this is like a chunk from making the bead roller. We got that and a, and a chunk of round bar. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this round bar into two pieces. I'm gonna put a round bar on this side I'm gonna put a round bar on this side. We're gonna clamp it into the vise, and then we're gonna hammer into the void, creating a tuck inside the void. Sir, we're just gonna take a little bit of that scale off. We plasma cut these circles out, so I'm, I'm prepping the edges right now. And the reason being is that the dross or any of the scale, which there is hardly any, but that stuff is harder than this material. So if a little bit flakes off and gets in between your hammer, or in between your dolly, or if you're using a machine, it gets into your dies or whatever, that hardened little piece of dross is gonna start making marks everywhere. And you just don't want that, so clean. All right, so if you're gonna use this technique, you need kind of a bit of a cross peen style hammer. That's what this is called. This is a normal body hammer. This is a Proto 1427 body hammer. Uh, lucky enough to get it at a swap meet for nice and cheap. But this hammer has a blunted peened end on it, right? You see that? It's not sharp like some of the picking hammers and, and that this rounded end um, is what we're gonna use to actually hit into the void of this, right? I've got this other hammer I'm also gonna use. I, if this one's actually a, a stretching hammer, it's got the cross peen on both sides, um, perpendicular to each other. I kinda like it better, I'll probably use it. But you can use that regular proto hammer, no problem. So um, let's do the same thing. We're gonna mark our tucks the exact same way. Start with a circle. I know it's not center. Oh, I, I just like tried, I missed my mouth. <laughs> just put Sharpie right on my lip. Cool, cool. Okay, so we want to tuck right on that spot.
Okay, so, there's my hammer. Let's drive some tucks in right here. So when these tucks start to go in, I do kind of want to help it actually. I might start it by just giving it a little bit of a bend so they know, it knows which way to start shrinking. There are our tucks. I don't know why that's hard for me to say. Let's pull this out. I'm gonna stick this in here. This is something somebody made, you can make one too. Go to a scrap yard and just get heavy chunks of steel. Ask the guys nicely, bring them some donuts, be like, hey, can I just for, can I pay a little more than scrap price and, and go raid your junk pile? That's where you get weird shaped solid chunks of steel that you don't have to buy directly from the metal store, which would be really expensive. So that's what this one is. This is just a heavy chunk of steel. Somebody actually forged this and welded it and, and whatever, but I got it on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap. So this is what I'm gonna use to hammer those tucks out. Same thing as, as we did before. We're gonna capture these tucks. Okay, those tucks have been captured. That, that information is now in the panel. This material has been put into the panel. We already have our shape starting. This is not like a huge amount of shrinking that's happening. In fact, I believe that the shrinking stump gets you the most shrink out of these techniques, but these are, these are all ways like, there's a crazy amount of shrink in that stump and most shapes don't require that much shrink depending on what it is. Like it'd be more like a panel like this that just needs a little bit. So you can use certain techniques in different places depending on what you're doing. So now this is not my favorite hammer cause it's loose and it's whatever, but we're going to use it anyway. We have shrinking with a trough style tucking tool that gets you the same result. We are shrinking no matter what we do with any of these hammers, as long as you understand how to put the shrink in it. So capture the tuck or facilitate the shrink with a bowl. One more way that maybe we'll cover in a future video. I saw this a few months back and it's a very ingenious tool. Basically it's doing the same thing as you make your tuck with a fork with a trough, whatever, but then it's a tool that holds down each edge of the tuck with a couple of vice grips to keep the material from pushing out. Now those vice grips are doing the same thing as the bowl by holding the material so that when you hammer the tuck down, it has nowhere to go but into the steel. Thank you all for watching Make It Custom. If you enjoyed the video, please comment. Tell me what you liked about it. Tell me if there's anything else you'd like to learn. Tell me if you think that I'm an idiot and, uh, <laughs> and we'll all make the channel better that way. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. If you're interested, there's the custom crew membership. It's $5 a month. You get 15% off on the merch store, which is japanscustoms.com. It also gets you a badge by your name, makes you a little more searchable in the comments, and it really helps support the channel and this metal shaping community. So thank you very much once again, and we'll catch you next time on Make It Custom. See ya.